Hey, so this is Francesco Yates. We're at It's Always Something Variety Show. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Good. I'm, I'm kind of excited to play this this venue. I love the sound in there. Yeah. It's just an overall great venue. I'm just uh, Absolutely. Just enjoying the vibes. So why is Gilda's Club so important for you? Why did you come out tonight? Well, well, first of all, they asked me to be a part of it, and I just um, anytime there's something to do with music and towards helping other people, uh, which I know that this is about, is, is always something I like to be a part of. So, uh, you know, I could not. Awesome. See, we made CBC's list of 25 under age 25. And um, how do you persevere and rise to the top of your industry when it seems like so many people these days are musicians or in a band? How do you overcome that? You have to kind of dream. You kind of have to uh, envision yourself as larger than life and uh, own your craft. Have a lot of have a lot of belief in yourself. Develop your uh, develop your skill and have a lot of faith in the higher power. That's what I. That's how I do it. Awesome. And I know the movie School of Rock had a huge influence on you. Was there a certain scene or point in that movie that clicked with you, and uh, what made you go forward with pursuing your dream of music? Just the overall vibe of the kids in the movie. They dared to dream big and. Uh, I just like, I, I've always had a dormant like for music, and I think that's what brought it out. Something about that movie brought that out. So I think uh, I'm, I'm glad that that set it off because I've been, I've been very good ever since. Well, it's a good thing because look where you are now. You know, it's, and, and, and it's going to, and, and I'm going to continue to push, uh, push the movement forward and just, uh, you know, get them. Awesome. Well, congratulations on all your success. Wish you the best. Have a great time tonight. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. How's it going? It's going pretty good. So I'll just thank you. I interviewed you here last year, so mm -hmm. it's clearly not the first time you supported this uh, It's Always Something event. What keeps you coming back to support Gilda's um, Club? I think this is my 11th year, wow. 14. And it's, I mean, basically it's the people. It's a great organization. Uh, it's an organization I really believe in, and um, I really want to get the name out there. Still, um, a lot of people don't know what Gilda's Club uh, does. And, um, I've, I've had some friends who have gone through uh, cancer and their families, and I've always recommended uh, Gilda, and they've always thanked me for it. So um, I think the main thing is to get the word out there about uh, Gilda is there for you and your family to get through one of the most horrible times you can ever uh, expect in life. It's a good message. So Colin, you were actually born in Scotland and lived there for a few years till you moved to Canada. What was it like growing up in Scotland? What are some of your favorite things to do there? Um, I, w I managed to go back there uh, last year for uh, it was my wife's birthday, so we took the Royal Scotsman, which is sort of the oh, Orient cool. Express, and uh, went up and down. Again, the people are uh, lovely. They're sort of uh, the Newfoundland of Europe. Everyone is just warm and tell great stories and know how to drink. Awesome! Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going, Barbara? How was your evening? Your performance was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. The evening's great. Great. Absolutely. Cast backstage to hang out with. Yeah. Um, so what's important about Gilda's Club and what brought you here tonight? Why does it mean so much to you? Oh man, I mean, of course, Gil Gilda Radner, a legend in the first place, such a tragic story. And how many tragic stories every single day people lost to cancer. So I personally lost family to cancer. I lost my grandfather's it's a, it's a fight and it's inspiring to see so many people come together and decide to embark on that together. So. Yeah, it's important not to be alone during these times. Exactly. Together we can we can surmount this. I hope so. So um, while I do enjoy listening to jazz, I don't listen to it actively. Like I don't seek it when I hear it. I like it. So I'm just asking from my perspective, it seems like jazz isn't a prominent genre these days in the 21st century. And if you feel that way, are there any challenges that come with that being a performer in these times? Not really. I mean, it depends. Of course, it's a niche market, but I think you go into it because you love it and not necessarily because you're trying to use it as a vessel for fame, you know? You're just sort of doing what you love. And if you get to be jazz famous, which is an entirely different thing, you know, you get to collaborate with great people, you get to play in great venues, and you get to travel and, and explore music around the world. So, awesome. so you, you, get, you get what you want with <laughs> where you go. <laughs> awesome. So I know you love to read, you love sci-fi novels and manga. What are some of your favorite books? Uh, some of my favorite books yeah. are manga. Um, I really love anything by Watase Yu. Uh, big fan of the Yashino series, Rishiki Yugi, Genbu Kaiden. Um, my 
favorite though, my favorite with Hasio today is Imadoki. Um, <laughs> aside from that, I mean, I love the Sarah Douglas books. Uh, I've been reading uh, recently Nicole Peeler. I actually came across her at the New York Comic Con a oh, couple cool. years ago. for sure. Thank you for chatting with us and thank you for performing tonight. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello again, Russell. How's it going? Wait, what is that? A flip cam? Uh, no, it's some RCA shit. I don't know. I like my flip cam better. I had it last year. <laughs> so, so, what's up? Not much. That's it, huh? That's what we're doing? That's it? You waited all this time to do that and then go, that's it. Get it all written down. Read. In a minute. <laughs> so, um, I was here last year and I saw you and I saw the show and I think it's great that you and Colin and others come back every year and support the cause. Yeah. And uh, I know unfortunately you lost your dad a while ago. Right. And I think it's great that you're kind of the voice for a lot of people who feel hopeless and like that where to turn to. Well, I hope I'm not the voice for all those people. <laughs> A lot of losers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, it's just it's just it's just what you do. Yeah. You can't really think about it. I know it's tough. Yeah. Okay, so I want to bring up something that you said quite a while ago, like more than ten years ago. Okay. You said if what I'm saying is true, you can't get mad and have a problem with it. If you do, you have a problem with reality. That's not my problem. That's your problem. You can't dispute the truth and I feel the same way about people and the things like I'll say a fact sometimes and then they act crazy but they complain about the world so I'm like how do you expect the world to change if you cannot accept the truth what kind of bullshit is that I'm with you exactly you get it like when everybody was putting pray for Paris I'm like are they changing with, their display pictures no, to a, like, like that's not gonna help anybody exactly praying is there's a god why didn't he problem. stop it yeah there's no god <laughs> I'm an atheist. <laughs> awesome. So uh, you have traveled to a lot of countries in the world for touring and for personal reasons. What are some of your favorite countries you've been to and countries you'd like to go to that you haven't visited yet? Um, well, India is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, Bombay specifically. You got uh, your roots there. Mm -hmm. You got your roots there. Well, yeah, there's yeah. that and it just I love it there. It's really great. Um, I don't know. I like traveling. I like going and seeing all the different places in the world. Yeah. I've got a niche on my arm. <laughs> But I'm wearing velvet, so I have to pinch the jacket to scratch my arm. Okay, good. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Asia. I love going to Asia. Everywhere, Middle East. I don't care. Awesome. I enjoy myself wherever I go. That's good. So, um, what's one brown stereotype that does not apply to you? Um, that um, I like Indian movies. Sure, I know you hate Bollywood. Well, it's just, yeah, I don't get it. it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I don't watch him either, man. There you go. <laughs> and if you could box one person in a match, who would you fight against? I don't know. Put him in front of me. I used to box for real, so whoever you want. You can only really. box one more person. I mean, I don't know. I don't really hate anybody, so. Really? So it'd be more of a, you know, if they got a problem, maybe they can step to me. Then. Maybe. <laughs> okay, thanks for your time, Russell. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm here with comedian Ruben Paul, who's yes. from Los Angeles, currently in Toronto for the It's Always Something Variety Show. How's yeah. it going? Fantastic. Awesome. So what brought you to the event, and why is Gilda's Club so important to you? Um, it's a great cause, you know, and uh, when Russell called and asked me to do it, uh, I didn't hesitate to come and be a part of it. Because cancer is something that almost affects everyone, yeah. either directly or indirectly. It's a horrible disease, so anything that I can do to be a part of something like that. And then Gilda is a legend in the business, yeah. so even to be affiliated with her on levels, it's, a, it's an honor. We appreciate you coming. Oh, so, um, I was just saying off camera, I hadn't heard of you until tonight, and I enjoyed your set. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Did you tell everybody how fantastic I was? Not yet, I'll do that okay. tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to tell you how fantastic I was, but I was honored to be a part of this. I hope to come back if they'll ever have me again, but it was just awesome. I hope they do invite you back. But um, on stage, you were mentioning that you're of a Haitian descent. Your parents yes. are from Haiti, right? Yes. My Everybody in my family was born, well, my immediate family, mom, dad, brother, sister, they're all from Haiti. I was the only one born in America. Have you ever visited Haiti or any countries around there? Um, I've traveled all over the world. Ironically, I have not been to Haiti yet, unfortunately. Oh. But I am going to be going there, hopefully, the first part of 2016 to do a show there. Awesome. To raise money. Awesome. Yeah. 
Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. Thanks for great to know you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. And I love your hair color. Thank it's you. Awesome. It matches the outfit. Yeah, everything. Can we blue. get a shot of that? Oh, look, no. I'm gonna get a shot of this. Okay. <laughs> How fantastic is that? Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye, Rupert. Bye.